case, um, we do have, uh, seeing that quorum is established, I'll be calling the executive committee meeting to order at 10.05 a.m. And before we get started, I would just like to acknowledge um, that I'm calling in from the uh, unceded territories of the Coast Salish peoples, which includes the Musqueam, Squamish, Tsleil-Waututh, Coquitlam, and Katsi Nations. Um, this is colonially known as Burnaby Mountain, um, where we would be typically doing um, the work of the SFSS if we were um, not in a pandemic. Um, but recognizing that uh, all of uh, the majority of us um, are not working from, from these lands, um, it's critical that we are all recognizing where we, what lands we're situated on at this time as we work from home and really recognizing the stewards of the land in due course, recognizing the positions of power that we hold and the weight that standing in solidarity with uh, indigenous communities has um, during this time. So um, with that, um, welcome everyone um, to our second executive committee meeting of the term. It's nice to see everyone. And we'll get started this morning with our roll call of attendance. So I'm gonna go down the list as uh, you are uh, appearing on the agenda. And uh, I'll ask that everyone please share your name, pronouns, and access needs. Um, access needs are anything that we can do in this meeting to uh, make you feel more comfortable or uh, any uh, accommodations that may need to be met in order for you to um, be able to participate in this meeting to the fullest ability possible. Um, access needs can also be anything that we can do to, um, or any, pardon me, anything that you would just like the committee to know about your participation in this meeting today. Often common ones are my internet is unstable, there's construction in my background, um, I have a loud cat, I don't know, things like that. Um, so with that, um, you can also communicate those access needs to me privately um, via the Zoom DM feature as well. We'll get started under 3.1 committee composition and I'll start with myself. Um, hi everyone, my name is Gabe Leosis. My pronouns are he, him, his. I'm the president uh, of the SFSS and chair of the executive committee. Uh, and my access needs are met this morning. We move on to our vice president internal and organizational development. Hi everyone, my name is Corbett. Uh, pronouns are he, him, his. Access needs. Uh, I got my vaccine shot last yesterday evening, so I'm starting to develop the some side effects now, and so I might not be. I might have to like. I might not be as focused or um, as as normal. Thanks. Thanks, Corbett. Congratulations. Um, our Vice President of Finance and Services is not attending the meeting today. Um, Vice President, University and Academic Affairs. Hey everyone, my name is Serena. My pronouns are she, they. Um, for access needs, my internet is unstable, but other than that, um, they are met. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Vice President, External and Community Affairs. Okay, Dominic Skanathani. Hello, good morning. My name is Matt. Uh, my pronouns are he, him, his. As of right now, my accessibility needs. I can't find my glasses, so my eyes are kind of tired, so I might turn off my camera. No worries. Uh, Vice President, ex uh, pardon me, events and stu- no, equity and sustainability. Excuse me, go ahead. <laughs> hey, everyone. My name is Marie. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and my access needs are met. Thanks, Marie. Uh, now, VP Events and Student Affairs and our committee vice chair. Hi, everyone. My name is Jess. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and all my access needs are met. I just always look this way because my monitor is there, but I'm paying attention. Sounds good. Uh, we'll move on to society staff now. We have our uh, uh, operations organizer who is not attending the meeting today. Um, nextly, uh, SFSS board organizer. Hi everyone, um, I'm Ella. Uh, my pronouns are she, her. All of my access needs are met, but I might be turning off my camera um, just so I can have a little bit of uh, processing this morning. But yes, all my access needs are met. No worries, thanks. 
Ella. And if I'm not mistaken, this is your first executive committee meeting. So welcome. <laughs> cool, cool. Um, uh, administrative assistant. Hello, everyone. I'm, I'm Joseph, uh, pronouns he, him, and all my access needs are met. Thank you so much. Uh, we also have attending the meeting today, our Associate Vice President, University and Academic Affairs. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Priyanka. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and my access needs are met today. Thank you. And we also have our nominee for Vice President, External and Community Affairs here with us today. Um, hi, everyone. My name's Nim. Uh, my pronouns are she, they. Um, my access needs are met, but I will have to leave at like 1029.75 because I do have to get to class on time. Um, and I'm calling in from the traditional unceded stolen territories of the Samyama and Kwantla nations. Thank you so much, Nim. Okay, no one has been missed in the roll call, have they? Scanning my screen. Doesn't look like it. So we'll now move into our consent agenda. And I'll ask at this time if there are any objections. Well, the motion is be it resolved to adopt the consent agenda by unanimous consent. Please remember that the consent agenda doesn't require a mover or a seconder and will be approved on unanimous consent of the committee. If there is a motion under the consent agenda that folks would like to vote on as per usual, um, meaning not by unanimous consent, now is the time to object. I would like to object to uh, 4.11, adoption of the agenda. Sounds good. So we will consider the adoption of the agenda during the regular portion of our meeting, and we'll consider it directly after the consent agenda portion of the agenda. So now that is between section four and section five. So the only remaining motion under the consent agenda is 4.1.2, matters arising from the minutes. Are there any other concerns as it relates to the consent agenda? Okay, at this time, it appears I have the unanimous consent of the executive committee to approve the consent agenda. So we'll consider that approved, uh, carried as amended in this case. Um, and at this time, we will move into the adoption of the agenda, which is now, I guess, will be section five, uh, all at the end. So the motion reads, be it resolved to adopt the agenda as presented. Do I have a mover for the motion? Matt? Marie. Matt moves. Marie, would you like to second? Sure. Sounds great. Um, Okay, are there any uh, questions, con concerns, amendments to the agenda to be made at this time? There they are. Corbett, go ahead. Hi, I'd like to add a motion um, and I'll post it in chat. Just give me a minute to read it out as well. Um, whereas the VP Finance and Services is currently unable to complete certain time sensitive tasks due to unexpected medical, for unexpected medical reasons, uh, be it resolved that the executive committee task the VP internal and organizational development to complete any time sensitive finance and services tasks, including items that require VP finance and services signature uh, for until June 8th, 2021. Sounds great. Um, and you're going to paste that in the chat? Yes. Sorry, one second. Noisy background. No worries. Uh, take your time. Uh, Matt, go ahead. Yeah, I would like to um, end the agenda to include a discussion item titled <clears throat> uh, Town Hall with Bonnie Henry for post-secondary students on May 28th, and I just typed it in the chat. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Serena. I'd like to add a couple of discussion items. The first one is titled Protests in Columbia. And the second one is update on access for all campaign. Thank you, Serena. Are there any other uh, amendments to the agenda to be done at this time? 
Okay. Seeing none, we have uh, four different amendments being put forward at this time. Um, they need to be amended into the agenda. So we'll do that all in one big batch. Um, so in that case, I would like to move to put forward all four of those amendments to the agenda. Would anyone like to second that? Matt. Matt seconds. Thank you, Matt. Any questions or comments at this time on the amendments to the agenda? Okay, seeing none, we'll put the uh, amendment to the agenda to a vote. Uh, please remember that we've kind of changed the way we're voting from the last meeting. Um, I will assume you're voting in favor unless you indicate otherwise and indicate otherwise by raising your hand using the Zoom raise hand feature. And at that time, I will call on you um, and ask if you're uh, abstaining or voting against, if that is how you wish to vote. But in that case, I'll put the question forward now. All those in favor of amending the agenda seeking unanimous consent. Okay, that motion, that amendment is carried unanimously. We'll move on back to the main motion, which now reads, be it resolved to adopt the agenda as amended. Any last questions, comments, amendments, or concerns with the agenda? Okay, we'll put this question to a vote. We're now on the main motion, be it resolved to adopt the agenda as amended. All those in favor seeking unanimous consent. The motion is carried unanimously. Thank you, everyone. We'll now move into a uh, section, well, our section titled updates, um, CGSF temporary space. This was submitted by uh, Corbett. So Corbett, you have the floor. Thank you. Uh, so yes, um, I put up this agenda because we, you know, the, the previous board had some in-camera discussions about uh, the renovation um, of CHS's, uh, the their 1000 level uh, space. And we've been going back and forth, like me, John, Gabe, and I think that's, it's just us three, Gabe, or has it been other people as well? Mainly been us, yeah. Yeah. Um, have kind of been going back and forth uh, behind the scenes to try to sort with, also with SFU sorting out their, when CJSF will move into their space, uh, well, sorry, move out of the radio, their radio station space in Rotunda and moving into sub for, because the, the renovation itself could take up could take quite a while to like a year to complete. Um, CJSF needed temporary space, and so uh, in the past we uh, offered rotunda space as well as um, the the underground. Sorry, not rotunda space. My apologies. Uh, forum chambers and underground the undergrounds, which is like a kind of set up like a as lunchroom space that that students can use. Also, it's been used for event space and such. Um, unfortunately, neither space was uh, viable due to accessibility concerns um, and or uh, excessive cost to reno to temporarily renovate the space to be able to make it usable for um, CJSF's radio station needs. Um, they went back to SFU asking for space from them. They, and they asked for the old SFS spaces um, or at least part of them, and unfortunately those are already um, earmarked and uh, going to be renovated by SFU, so that was denied, um, and then we've uh, recently had a meeting with CJSF last um, Thursday, was it? Or Wednesday? Thursday? Yeah. Uh, and they told us that they are looking, their, their plans are to move into their space as is, but um, uh, kind of make it work for a bit and then um, uh, take some of their current custom mill work like their their desks and counters and stuff and see if they can modify it a bit to make it work in the, the current space um, because it's already set up for like three offices and an open area so they think it'd be a little bit easier to 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 temporarily use and then when they actually go to renovate they would use uh, their studio down in um, in Vancouver, near Vancouver campus, 
uh, for their live broadcast stuff, and they would just need like one office or so in the sub um, to maintain presence and coordinate and, and work with uh, students and stuff. So that makes um, kind of our lives a lot easier that they can, um, that they have an idea of how they can continually use a space and and we can work with them for going forward to on on the renovations and things like that thanks corba um does anyone have any questions on this update um yeah i was at that uh, that call with CJSF last week, and I'm really glad that we've um, come to this um, agreement. Um, and yeah, looking forward to seeing where this goes in the future. Corbett, did you, is there um, any idea on, I guess, is there any next steps that we need to be aware of? Um, they mostly just have to work with uh, John to get access to their space. So you get, like, uh, they have to we have like temporary fobs you can give out to um, some of their staff, uh, but they also need to, to get proper keys and stuff. Have, we'll have to go through SFU's access control process, which can take a couple of weeks because they're short staffed. Um, but John is handling that process. Uh, other than that, it's mostly just being, again, John them coordinating on when to move their equipment over the next month or so. Um, they generally hope to be out of their space by the end of June. And I believe, um, they've even been able to get some kind of financial support from SFU a little bit to help like pay for cost of movers or something so that it can be just done much more efficiently than them just having to get people come up, volunteers come up, you know, every weekend or something. Um, because they also are currently still operating and they still have, you know, they're also under COVID restrictions so they can't have a lot of other people in the office at one time. So, um, so I think it's just mostly us working with CJSF and SFU to kind of help coordinate all that kind of work. But I think mostly John will be the one to, to take the lead on that. Um, and if he needs help or enter, uh, if, if we have any kind of new roadblocks come up, we'll be aware, we'll be let, we'll be, they'll let us know and then we'll help out. Thank you. Any questions or comments on this update? Is everyone feeling comfy on that? Okay, well, thank you, Corbett, for the update. Um, and we'll move on at this time. So I'm now looking at our agenda. We're uh, in the section titled New Business. Uh, and we'll start with 6.1, which is Associate Vice President, External and Community Affairs Appointment. Um, this was submitted by Matt Provost, um, and I'll read the motion now. Whereas, as per Council Policies Rule 17, Associate Vice Presidents, Vice Presidents may appoint Associate Vice Presidents to assist in the duties of their respective Executive Office by nominating a member in good standing of the Society for the position. Whereas, as per Council Policies Rule 17, nominations for the position of Associate Vice President shall be ratified subject to approval by the Executive Committee by a, 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 a by majority vote. Whereas Vice President External and Community Affairs, Matthew Provost has nominated Nimrit, Nimrit Basra to serve as Associate Vice President External and Community Affairs. Be it resolved that the Executive Committee ratify the nomination of Nimrit ba Basra as Associate Vice President External and Community Affairs for the 2021-2022 term. Is there a mover for the motion? Matt moves. Matt moves. Is there a seconder? Marie. Marie seconds. Okay. Uh, Matt, you have the floor. Thank you. Is everyone able to hear me okay? Perfect. So I thought this was... Um, you know, really good opportunity to really open up the position for external and community affairs, especially for the incoming like new AVPs. And just from working with NIM and also knowing the work that they have done in the past year, also like on the BIPOC committee and also like within DSUs, I couldn't think of anybody better to support the external and community affairs role with some of the initiatives and portfolios that um, will be happening this year and I thought it would be really good experience especially I guess a more direct role with one of the vice presidents and working with the executive committee um, just to kind of you know just help have 
a more in-depth understanding and it seems like you know nim has been really eager and also really excited to work on some of the things that we already discussed prior to this so i was really thankful to know that um, this was something that they were interested in and i'm glad to have the opportunity to nominate them at this meeting and i think it's going to be a really great year so and really looking forward to working with you thanks matt um, is there anyone else who would like to speak to the motion at this time? I see Nim. I mean, uh, Marie has that superstar Nim in the chat. <laughs> would you like to go ahead? Yeah, this is a really, really exciting moment, um, especially since uh, I've worked with Nim in the BIPOC committee collectively, and I couldn't think of anyone better for this position. So really excited for you and excited for what you bring. So yeah. Thanks, Marie. Yeah, honestly, Nim, I've worked with you so much in the past before and seen the work that you've done. And I honestly think you're going to kill it in this role. And I know that you and Matt have a really special relationship too. So I'm excited to see you two work together as well. And for me, in whatever capacity to work with you as well, because I do enjoy working with you. You are so kind. Thank you. I'm super stoked. That's my word of, word of the week, stoked. Um, I'm really looking forward to doing good work and learning with you all and helping where I can. Stoked. <laughs> I'm stoked too. Does anyone else want to speak to the motion before we put the question to a vote? Okay, cool. Well, um, at this time, I'll read, I'll read the motion one more time, which is be it resolved that the executive committee ratify the nomination of NIM as Associate Vice President External and Community Affairs for the 2021-2022 term. All those in favor seeking unanimous consent. And again, if you would like to dissent or abstain, please use the Zoom uh, raise hand feature. But I'm seeing none. So the motion is carried uh, with uh, unanimous approval by the executive committee. Congratulations, Nim. Um, and looking forward to working with you more. Now, I know you have to go, but these meetings are always open to you. <laughs> Hopefully, see you in the future. <laughs> Thank you. Have a great rest of your meeting, y'all. You too. Or you too. Have a great class. I think that's where you're going. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, okay, uh, we're on motion 6.2 now which is a, uh, appoint employer representatives to the Women's Center Assistant Hiring Committee. Um, and I'll read the motion now. Uh, this was submitted by Jess. Uh, be it resolved to appoint acts to the Women's Center Assistant Hiring Committee. Um, is there a mover? Jess moves. Jess moves. Is there a seconder? Anyway. Marie. Okay, Marie, thank you. Um, Jess, did you want to speak to the motion first? Yes, yeah, so we're looking to hire a new women's center assistant, um, obviously for the women's center. So if anyone is interested, um, I will put my name up as one of them, but I also suggest that another executive, if they have the capacity to put their name forward so that we can get comfortable with hiring our staff, we know who we're working with. Um, I don't also want to rely on our um, on our operations organizer to do the work all of the time as well. Um, we'll be looking to them for support, but I also think we should step up in these hiring committees so we're involved. Thanks. Thank you, Jess. So just to confirm, you're you're putting your name forward for this one. Yes. Nice. However, I'm not sure if we need another person. We do. Uh, we need two folks to represent the employer on this hiring committee. Uh, Marie? Um, I'm happy to put my name forward. I think the question that I had is like, when would this be taking place? Um, this would be, I, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that uh, the employee uh, reps have been appointed already by CUPE, our staff um, labor union, um, and that this could very well um, start as early as next week. The committee can convene for the first time to review the, the, J, the job descriptions and uh, post the, 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 uh, the job posting shortly thereafter. Uh, 
Um, and so just to confirm again, um, that was you putting your name forward? Um, yes, I was just going to say, like, Jess, if you want to take the lead, I could be there to support. Um, however, if someone else wants to like take in a fuller um, role, they totally can, but I'm happy to put my name forward. Cool. Um, just as an access need, um, I'm in the sub and it appears they're drilling outside. So just if you can hear it, I apologize. Um, but um, at this time, so we have two names who uh, folks who are interested. Um, I, I am uh, bound as chair to ask if there are still folks um, who would like to um, put their name forward too. And in that case, um, we would just um, vote which two people out of those names would like to um, be on the committee. Was there anyone else who was interested? Okay, well, in that case, it appears Jess and Marie are uh, the two names for this committee. Um, would, um, bu 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 okay, so we need to move to amend this motion to replace Axe with um, Jess and Marie. So in that case, I will move to make that amendment. I will be moving to replace Axe with Jess De La Cruz and Marie Haddad. Um, is there a seconder? Jess seconds. Jess seconds, thanks Jess. Any questions or comments on the amendment to the main motion? Cool, we'll put this to a vote. Um, be it resolved to replace Axe with Jess De La Cruz and Marie Haddad. All those in favor seeking unanimous consent. Motion is, the amendment is carried unanimously. Back to the main motion, be it resolved to, uh, well, the main motion now reads, be it resolved to appoint Jess De La Cruz and Marie Haddad to the Women's Center Assistant Hiring Committee. Any last questions or comments at this time? So I guess action items out of this are, um, first of all, I will get in touch to determine who the um, QP reps are on this hiring committee. Let um, Jess and Marie know. Um, and whoever um, out of the two of you decides to take the lead, I, I see in the chat, it kind of looks like Jess, well, as Marie said, might be Jess. Um, so Jess, I will let you know. Um, who those names are, and um, it's up to you folks to um, coordinate a first meeting of that hiring committee, and I'll be here to provide support to you folks on, on next steps in that regard as well. Cool, cool. Yeah, thank you both for putting your name forward on this motion. I think it's safe to put the question to a vote at this time. So, um, be it resolved to appoint Jess De La Cruz and Marie Haddad to the Women's Center Assistant Hiring Committee. All those in favor seeking unanimous consent. The motion is carried unanimously. Thank you, executives. Um, carried as amended, I should say, unanimously. And now we'll move to our next um, motion regarding hiring committees. Um, and that is appointing employer representatives to the Administrative Assistant Hiring Committee. This was also submitted by Jess. Be it resolved to appoint X to the Administrative Assistant Hiring Committee. Do I have a mover for the motion? Jess moves. Thank you, Jess. Is there a seconder? Corbett seconds. Corbett seconds. Thank you both. Jess, would you like to speak to the motion first? We also have another hiring committee to hire the administrative assistant. Um, so if anyone wants to step up and do that, I'm already on two hiring committees. Again, I don't also, I don't always want us to rely on our operations organizer. We should look to them for support, of course, as always. Um, but this is also part of our role and we should step up. So if anyone has a capacity, please feel free to do so. If you're not able to right now, then we can talk about this later. Thank you, Jess. Um, yeah, at this time, I'll, I'll ask for uh, folks to motivate for the hiring committee, um, if you would like at this time. Corbett, you're on the speakers list. Corbett. Yeah, sorry, I just 
focus and with the, the, the sometimes the keys don't work. Um, I'm not motivated for this. Sorry, I was more actually suggesting maybe we want to open this up to council because uh, assistance roles are not that as, as long as we have like maybe one exec and then the, re the other one could be a player rep, it could be a, a council member if we have time. If, if this is more time sensitive or we want to get two people on now and going, then I, I'll put my name forward. I just, I, I'm, I'm happy to give opportunity for some of these roles that are not as, um, like, uh, serious. I don't know, that's not the right term, but you know, I understand it's, it's assistant role versus say a coordinator role um, to have, give opportunity for our council members to get experience. Thanks, Corbett. Yes, these, these positions obviously are very, very serious. Um, Serena, go ahead. I just wanted to say that if it's time sensitive, like I can um, be on the hiring committee for this. I also wanted to ask if AVPs are allowed to be on hiring committees or not. Um, that's a good question. Um, if the AVP is a member of council, then I would say yes. But um, um, I would say that um, executives and council should be given priority first. Um, there is a bit of, it, it depends on the circumstance and the position, but usually uh, no would be my answer. Um, so sorry, just double checking. Serena, did you say you're interested? Yeah, I am. And thank you for answering the question. Awesome. No worries. So we have one interested executive, Serena. Um, at this time, I still would like to keep the floor open for other executives if there is interest. Jess, do you have a... I'm not interested, but I do support and agree with Corbett's comment so we can open this up to the rest of council just so that they can get familiar with hiring committees and maybe that's an opportunity for them if they like it to be on other hiring committees and if they're interested in running for an executive position next year, that could be something that they like to do as well. Sounds good. I like that idea. So um, in that case, we can keep the second seat open at this time. Um, and open the other seat to council. So um, at this time, because um, we are still at the executive committee and we have one name open, we can move to amend the motion to um, strike X for Serena. So um, let's do that first. I, I would like to move at this time to replace X with Serena Baines. Is there a seconder? Marie. Marie seconds. Okay, any questions on the amendment at this time? Okay, um, we'll put that to a vote. All those in favor seeking unanimous consent. All right, the amendment is carried unanimously and we'll move back to the main motion. I'd, I'd actually like to make another amendment to the motion to add a beat for the resolve clause. So I would like to move to amend the motion to add a beat for the resolve clause that reads, be it further resolved that the executive committee, um, seek and identify uh, a counselor to fill the second employer seat on the Administrative Assistant Hiring Committee. So let me just type that wording in the chat. So I actually changed the wording a bit. So let me let me say that again. I would like to move to amend the motion to add another be it for the resolve clause that reads, be it further resolved that the executive committee add a motion to the next council meeting agenda 
to seek and identify a non-executive counselor to fill the second employer seat on the administrative assistant hiring committee. Uh, is there a, well, I'm moving. Is there a seconder? Matt. Matt seconds. Thank you. Um, any questions or comments on this amendment at this time? Just as a formality so that we're committing to uh, putting the motion forward to council for um, this would be next week. And as chair of the executive committee, I'll make sure that this and the chair of council, I'll make sure that this motion does make it on that council agenda. Okay. All those in favor of the amendment seeking unanimous consent. The amendment is carried. And we'll move back to the main motion at this time. And I'll, I'll read the main motion because we've now just did two amendments to it. It now reads, be it resolved to appoint Serena Baines to the Administrative Assistant Hiring Committee. And be it further resolved that the Executive Committee add a motion to the next council meeting agenda to seek and identify a non-executive counselor to fill the second employer seat on the Administrative Assistant Hiring Committee. Any last discussion? All right, I feel like we're becoming pros at amendments. So um, we'll put the main motion to a vote. Um, all those in favor of the main motion, which is be it resolved to appoint Serena Baines to the administrative service, the services of the administrative assistant hiring committee, and be it further resolved that the executive committee add a motion to the um, next council meeting agenda to seek and identify a non-executive counselor to fill the second employer seat on the administrative assistant hiring committee. Thank you, Jess, for putting the full motion. We will now vote. All those in favor seeking unanimous consent. Seeing no objections, the motion is carried uh, as amended unanimously. Thank you, everyone. We are now gonna move to our um, next core, but you came back just in time because we're about to talk about your motion. I'll read the motion now. Whereas the VP, well, this is called VP Finance and Services Task Delegation. Whereas the VP Finance and Services is currently unable to complete certain time sensitive tasks due to unexpected medical reasons, be it resolved that the Executive Committee task the Vice President Internal and Organizational Development to complete any time sensitive finance and services tasks, including items that require VP Finance and Services signature until June 8th, 2021. Is there a mover for the motion? Corbett moves. Corbett moves. Is there a seconder? Matt. Matt seconds. Uh, Corbett is the mover of the motion. Would you like to speak first? Yeah, um, this is partially a couple different things. Um, we're starting our audit and we're doing all the prep, prep stuff and some of those things the VP Finance needs to do. But um, as a past, previous VP Finance, I can, I've been trying to help out as best I can, but there's things that it'd be best if I had the um, kind of uh, authority from executive to be able to do, to go further, to be able to like, for instance, sign off on certain uh, items. Um, additionally, things like payroll and others, other items need um, the VP Finance to approve, um, sign things or approve uh, bank transfers and things like that. And I, I have the ability to do so, but from a policy perspective, I'm not VP Finance anymore. So I wanted to, to help out um, Almas. I wanted to be given this authority to step in if necessary, uh, because uh, she's currently not able to consistently uh, check emails and things like that. So I just want to make sure this stuff still happens and there's no delays. You're muting. I realize that. Thank you, Corbett, for explaining the motion. Um, yeah, and I, I just add to this that um, uh, as much as I would love to share more, I don't think it's really my place um, uh, to um, divulge, I guess, almost the situation at this time, but um, uh, she is unable at this time to perform a lot of uh, her duties due to um, uh, private matters and medical reasons. Um, hopefully um, she will be back soon. Um, but at this time, as Corbett mentioned, there are time sensitive uh, and required tasks that do need to be carried out. And so if we can delegate 
those um, responsibilities to another member of the executive committee and, and Corbett has volunteered to be that individual, um, we can ensure that those tasks, namely the audit, um, tasks related to the audit rather are completed in a timely manner. So at this time, are there any questions about the, the motion on the table? Go ahead, Matt. Not so much any motions, I mean, uh, questions like, and just in terms of, I guess, more so like a comment, if there's any extra needed support in terms of like the services aspect of that portfolio, anything from that comes up, I wouldn't mind um, if there's any support that Corbett needs on that end regarding services. If anything comes up, just feel free to keep me posted and then I can support um, at that capacity. Yeah, thanks, Matt. Yeah, it, mostly it's been finance related, but uh, if something comes up, I, I'll definitely reach out to you. Thanks, Matt. Any other questions at this time, questions or comments or concerns? Okay, so um, we'll put the question to a vote at this time. And the motion reads, let me just pull it back up again. It's in the chat there if you need to see it. Be it, be it resolved that the executive committee task the vice president internal and organizational development to complete any time sensitive finance and services tasks, including items that require the VP finance and services signature until June 8th, 2021. All those in favor seeking unanimous consent. Seeing none, the motion is carried unanimously. Thanks everyone. And I believe if I'm not mistaken, that concludes new business for our meeting today. Um, we will be moving into our discussion item, uh, section titled discussion items at this time. And our first discussion item is 7.1, SFU co-op executive officer roles. This was submitted by Corbett. So Corbett, you have the floor. Hi, everyone. Sorry, one second. Just let me do a quick look up. Okay. Yes. So uh, attached to the minutes or the agenda should have uh, is, um, okay, sorry, jumping ahead. Uh, la a couple of weeks ago, I reached out to SFU and was directed to the director of co-op. Because uh, I was I was ex asking about exploring the idea of both um, having executive roles counted as co-op if if the student member the, the person in that role wanted it, as well as uh, general information about co-op, um, especially if we wanted to, in the future wanted to try to have some of our our current roles, um, sorry current staff roles whether coordinator or well potentially anything but i'd be most likely the the designated assistants or the coordinator roles that's counted as co-op if it's a, if a student was in those roles um and and what that looks like from employer benefits or or responsibilities all that kind of stuff so it was very i had a meeting with um muriel the director and it was very positive uh sound going over the basics of an executive responsibilities and hours and 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 such um by it looks like they would could be counted as an exec uh, as a co-op uh, if you wanted to of course you just pay the fee and stuff um i think it would we had double check things but i think it would be counted as a self-directed co-op so you'd get like a hundred dollar bookstore gift, gift certificate on top of that uh, or so it, it, to kind of try to reduce some of your your co-op fee costs um, this would this particular situation would benefit international students or students on, um, um, say, like a, sorry scholarship and stuff, where they'd have to be classified as full time to maintain their 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 various uh, benefits, um, like study permits, and not necessarily have to take you know three classes or four classes on top of trying to be a full time executive. Um, and, and pretty much for any student that wouldn't like to have this counted as uh, like a professional or, or academic type co-op would be, you know, why not, right? Um, 
and if you're taking you can still take classes on top of that because classes but when they when do with co-ops you have to get your your employer has to approve or your supervisor in this case has to approve you taking classes and we would just add you know the council or whatever would would actually in this case we have to one thing that we'd have to do is kind of solidify what the uh, the reporting roles are uh because sorry noisy background one second okay it's getting a bit better um under our bylaws the president it it pretty much says that president would be the supervisor for could act as a supervisor for all the vp uh vps and as for the student supervisor of the president we can apply that to say the oversight committee um and they have to fill out the, the individual supervisors have to fill out a form which i linked uh, which was was uh sorry sent along with the agenda um and it's fairly straightforward nothing too complicated um we would just have to let co-op know that this this is the structure of going in place and it'd be good to have this codified somewhere like in a policy in the future um but i think just uh, an email from the president saying this is how it'll get laid out will probably suffice for now um as for sorry your question just about taking two classes you can still apply yes uh because you just have to have your classes approved by your supervisor which in this case most likely would be game right um but the point is you wouldn't have to necessarily take classes if you didn't want to right you have more options and more of a choice and for some some degrees where there isn't a lot of co-op options this is a good option i think for students um and so yes i, I think it's a, it's an option it's a it's 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 a choice you can make because some people maybe don't, don't want to pay the fee or they don't need the extra co-op or whatever because their current circumstances it's just um equitable and uh i did ask about when it would be applied and she said it could actually be applied for this term if you wanted to get it done we just have to you know do the paperwork um and so i can take continue to take the lead on that i can get names of people that want to do this and we can start doing emailing back and forth with gabe and and the director and stuff um uh, so i'll send out an email after this meeting or later today this about this specifically um there's also some other benefits from um a uh employer side there is uh, a couple different things like i know if, if you hired someone to do like a tech based co-op like say we want to have a web developer or something as, as a co-op um you can sometimes get grants and stuff to help subsidize the cost of those wages um, in the case of even for us, I believe it looks like uh, Muriel sent off um, an organization that's like a partner with SFU that provides, um, I think it was either $7,500 a year or $7,500 per co-op term um, uh, as per co-op for subsidies, so which could cover a significant amount of our, our wages and basically free up money to go back to student or to the SFS to be spent on programming or something else. So I'll look more into that. Um, uh, but it looks like they're there and there, I know there's something to do with like, I think the government also has like a 10% uh, wage tax benefit or something like that for hiring co-ops as well, student co-ops. So um, there's, there's a lot of potential benefit for us, uh, for the SFS. Uh, not just for the individual students, but from a financial perspective as well. So, yeah, that's that's all I really had to say. Just want to update everyone and and see what your thoughts were. Thanks, Corbett. Um, I believe Serena's next on the speakers list. Um, yeah, I just had a question. So, would students or would we apply? um as you would normally for co-op so like say i'm in health sciences i would have to apply through the department of health sciences and meet like their requirements or would the requirements be different like for say like gpa or like credits that kind of thing uh i'll have to double check that with mira for the process but again if this is classified as a self-directed co-op it may not need it may just go through whatever their portal is 
um, I guess we would have to register the SFS as an employer, a co-op employer. And so I'll, I'll look further into that. Thank you. Uh, I was entirely sure how that worked with different departments, if they had different requirements or not. Because as I did ask about the academic aspect of it, because I knew some some pre, some degrees preferred you to have like a you know taking a co-op that's relevant to your your studies, but there is also a, what's called a professional development co-op, which could be things like for manager roles or for things that are just uh, you think you benefit yourself in some way that maybe not directly related to your academics. So that could also this role could also fit that. It depends on the individual program and and major. Thanks, Corbett. Just go ahead. Corbett, you suggested that this be implemented into policy. Which one would it be like bylaws, issues, policies? It would probably, oh, sorry. Um, top of my head, uh, we probably create a new policy in this under for like either probably, probably part of the council policies and with the relevant sections for executives. Uh, for co-op placements or something like that. But I, I think in the long run, if we also start using uh, or try, try to get um, co-op options for our, our staff, um, we'll have to have policies around that anyways, um, like staff related policies. So that'll be in a different section, in the, I think in the long run. And, and for anything financially, like for instance, applying for grants or anything like that, that can help subsidize um, our, our employment costs. Thanks, Corbett. Um, so I have a couple of questions. Um, well, first of all, before I ask any of those, I think this is really good. Um, I know personally, I could definitely use a semester to just focus on SFSS and I may likely do this next semester. So this is kind of good. Um, but if this is something that can kind of perpetually exist, um, I think it will actually serve, solve a lot of problems, namely like burnout and, um, and you know, take down a lot of barriers that typically exist within the SFSS, um, or at least um, uh, like in order to become involved with the SFSS, um, not being able to take um, a lower course load during your time on the SFSS because of scholarships or what have you, um, needing, you know, working a second job, um, et cetera, et cetera. There, there's a lot of things that are solved here. So I'm really happy that you took the time, Corbett, to look into this. Um, my question, I have, I have a couple of questions in relation to what to do on our end. Um, it might take a while for us to develop a policy, which is not a problem. I think we can still move forward anyway, but we should consider passing a motion um, to outline, you know, a couple of things, A, who the co-op supervisor is, um, that the executive committee is eligible, who is the supervisor of the president, just so that there is a resolution passed uh, for us to take a stance on that. And then maybe as part of that motion, we can task the governance committee to actually codify that in policy. Um, Corbett, does that, how does that sound to you? No, I, I agree with you. Yeah, I think it would be good to have a motion to give some action to, to work on. So then we can also task, you know, if if to help spread the the the, the work if necessary and get other people involved like like um, Ella and Aisha and stuff with discussion so that they also know what's how this whole process works. Because most likely in the future they might be the ones handling the initial transition and we're asking people board members of, or council members, sorry, exec members if they want to claim this as an exec or not and what the process is and such. Cool. Did you want to do it at this meeting or do you want to have that for like a future exec meeting? Uh, we, I would say let's wait until the next executive committee meeting. That way we have more time to um, solidify that motion a bit more and, and work out the finer details. So as an action item, we can take uh, uh, you and myself can work on that motion and bring it back to executive. that sound good? That sounds good. Cool. Um, in the meantime as well, um, do we need to uh, reach out to the direct uh, 
co-op director and um, explain what we would like this process to look like on our end? Uh, yes, uh, yes, we should. Uh, I told her I would get back to her once we've had this, the execs had this conversation, um, if they wanted to go forward or not with this, and then we can uh, get the details. Cool. And what 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 basically what SFS SFE needs uh, for SFS to become a registered employer and all that other kind of work. So get all the paperwork uh, compiled. Sounds great. Um, are there any questions or comments on SFU co-op for executive roles at this time? Does everyone on, on the executive committee here today feel comfortable with everything we've talked about? Cool, cool. Okay. Well, we have action items, um, which include um, emailing the co-op director, um, looking into uh, the grants, uh, wage subsidy thing that Corbett was talking about, um, creating paper or, uh, uh, codifying the process on how this looks like. So uh, first kind of passing a motion and also tasking governance committee to solidify this in policy. And um, in terms of that motion that I just discussed, Corbett and I will work on that motion and bring it to executive next, next uh, in two weeks. Thank you just for writing this down, by the way, I'm looking at your notes. Okay, so in that case, we will, um, that concludes discussion 7.1. And we, we have, um, we're doing pretty good on time. So would everyone appreciate five minutes to get up and stretch, get some coffee, eat? Okay, cool. So in that case, we'll come back at 11.07.
Let's come back, y'all. <laughs> Sorry, I'm reading Corbett's comment. I'm dead. Okay, is everyone back? If you're able to, please turn on your camera so I can see you. If you're not, I see all the thumbs up, so that works too. Corbett and Matt, are you there? Oh, nice, cool, cool, cool. There's Matt's beautiful smile. <laughs> okay, Marie, we'll put my camera on in a second. Cool, okay, we're all back. Welcome back. So our next, um, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, our next discussion item is, well, first, I will be reconvening the executive committee. It is now 11.08. Um, 7.2 member services annual report, and this was submitted by Corbett Gildersleeve. You have the floor. Yeah, this is something me and Jess um, are working on, but uh, so the general idea, the higher level idea behind this is that since the executive committee, other than like last year, is much more focused on administrative and operational uh, direction and day-to-day -day stuff, that for us to be able to do that, we need to know how things are going or how things went last year, that kind of stuff. We need reports like operation type reports. Um, uh, so the first thing I thought would be useful, and I went to Jessup with this idea, was to get um, an idea of how, kind of ask for almost like an annual report from member services um, in all the different areas, uh, from Surrey to clubs, to student unions, to events, um, to get an idea. And I had a couple set, me and Jess went over a couple of different ideas on what could be asked. But generally the, the thing is like, how did last year go for you compared to previous years? How did the, the pandemic impact you? What kind of metrics can you give us? Like, you know, number of grants this year versus last year, the amounts, what people tend to focus on, um, what kind of challenges you found from students like mentioning things to you or requesting things to you, kind of what changes happened so that we have an idea of like how the, the pandemic really impacted our, our services on that side of things. Um, because a lot of these staff also work directly with students, um, well, through emails or, or virtually this time, but they also have a very different, good perspective on what students were, were facing related to their services that we, when we might hear that too, but we might hear it from either a different way or in a different amount. So overall, this is just a, the idea of having discussion around this specific type of report, but also in the future asking for other types of reports like commu communications and reports as well. And we can use these information to also um, uh, add to our SOS annual report that's due in for the AGM in the fall. So I think the good idea for us to get this asked now, get the, get it started, maybe give each, each group like a month or so to do it. Um, to go through and try to, it's just a matter of, we'd also want to have some discussion on like what should go into those reports, um, what kind of metrics should go in and it probably will be different based on each, each department. You know, for instance, communications, I'd like to know, you know, how many people we access our web, different parts of our websites, what kind of analytics can they give us, social media, all that kind of stuff. Um, it might be a little bit harder now because without Cindy here, because she would be the one that would probably have the most experience for the last number of years to be able to see the differences, but do our best. Um, you know, things like uh, what um, what the communications, uh, like the CR CRPC department did over the last year, things like that. Just a good staff side annual review, because we already have one from the board uh, that we, we've done through. So it'd be nice to have a staff side one as well. Thank you, Corbett. Um, I think this is a, a good idea, and I think something that... Um, would be greatly beneficial in a number of ways, um, as you outlined. Um, in this way, um, how would you like to proceed with something like this? Um, first, firstly, um, as you mentioned, we would need to develop, I guess, what the contents of this we would like to be. And secondly, um, kind of metrics that we would like to see in terms of, um, yeah, um, I, I'd just like to hear more on that. Uh, yeah, so currently me and Jess had had met last week to draw down some ideas 
I get like a rough draft in a way. Uh, it could be, we could set up somewhat of a template for each design for each department. Um, I think it'd be good to involve Aisha as the operations organizer um, and to, and then most likely we'll even have to have like an initial sit down maybe with each department's uh, coordinator um, and uh, just have an initial discussion and then just kind of give them the, the, the requirements of the reports and a rough uh, deadline and, and have um, kind of Aisha take over and make sure that it happens. Um, that's that's my initial ideas. Uh, Jess, yeah, if you have uh, additional ones or if anyone else has additional ones. This is a kind of a new thing, I think, for us. I don't think we've ever really done this kind of serious report before, but I think it's really need needed for the way this committee will to operate effectively. Thanks, Corbett. Uh, Jess, go ahead. Um, I think it's also good for history keeping and record keeping and that regardless or not, there will be another pandemic, hopefully not knock on wood, I think that this is something that needs to continue from our staff as well, um, just so that future executive members can look at what their staff did, who was on our staff, um, continue that relationship and that history building. I just want to confirm, though, what departments we are going to ask for this report, but that could be a later discussion if you'd like. Sorry, I was adjusting my thermostat. Um, Corbett, do you have a, a response to that? I think in the long run, uh, like over the whole summer, we should have a report from every single department that has coordinators, especially staff. Well, in all cases, even whether the staff or not, like it'd be good to see what how the impact of impact like the pandemic impact of finance office and things like that. But I think for we can start probably with the member services because. They're the first ones going to be opening up and meeting students in the fall. So if there's any concerns or things that we actually, if anything from the report requires, you know, changes to our services or, or upgrades, it would probably best to know to get them first. So I think they're they're going to be the first test bed for this. So that would be Surrey events, um, student union and groups, and uh, clubs. So those four. Cool, thank you, Corbett. Um, and so in terms of uh, uh, next steps for this, um, I anticipate it would be good for, and well, I anticipate it would be good for you, Jess, and maybe uh, for you and Jess to meet with Aisha to kind of flush this out a bit more. And I, I would actually love to be in that meeting too um, and kind of develop some um, content for what we would like to see and then kind of uh, uh, request uh, the uh, uh, member services uh, to compile this. Does that sound good? That makes sense to me, yeah. Cool, cool. Um, so I anticipate we would only need like 30 minutes or so, or maybe an hour, I don't know, but... Um, would someone like to be um, tasked with coordinating that meeting between the four uh, of us? I can do it. I can send out the email. Cool. I'm going to nominate you, Jess, because, you know, member services is under your review more, in a way, some ways, not all. But yeah, no, I'm happy to send out that email. Sounds good. Thank you. Um, sorry, I don't have the chat open. I feel like I'm missing stuff. Oh, there we go. Oh, I see. <laughs> um, okay, I, I appreciate you bringing this forward, um, Corbett and Jess. Um, are there any other questions at this time? Okay. Well, we have action items there, which is great. Thank you. We will move on from this discussion item to 7.3, which is um, um, Town Hall with Dr. Bonnie Henry for post-secondary students on May 28th. Matt, you may have the floor. Thank you. Just give me one second. I'm gonna pull up this email that I got. But I think everybody um, seen it. I'm just looking for it. So I got this email on Friday. 
And so it happened like really, really quick. So it looks like I know that there was another town hall from my understanding like a little while ago, because there was some students at like UBC talking about it. And so there's another one. Um, and it's just basically from what it says, they're looking for like student unions, like to have their leaders. Um, so in our like SFSS, we could have up to 15 from uh, SFSS. And I know it's like short notice, but I wanted to kind of reach out to either like, you know, um, FNSA or even SOCA, DNA, like places like that, just to send the invite over and the link so that, you know, if they want to send someone from their board to kind of go, then um, they're welcome to, but if they don't have the capacity, that's fine. And we can just, I can give updates and to say, this is what was discussed. And um, I have some questions that I want to kind of pose. And I think this is really important for us to go to, because this will kind of impact some of the information that I know, um, Serena brought up with like return to campus. So I think this might give us a little bit more clarity. And I think we really need to prioritize this. Um, Cause I know even with, um, you know, currently with the external role, like typically it would be me and Gabe going to different meetings and stuff. Like if this was in person, like we would be going and speaking on behalf of um, the SFSS, but glad that it's virtual so that we can have more folks to attend. So I would just um, kind of give everyone a little bit to look at the email um, it kind of has some stuff outlined, but there is a Slido, a Slido link um, to submit our questions. And I was looking at this, they need to be submitted by 2 p.m. today. So I think coming up with, I don't know, I would say a minimum of five solid questions from our end, um, or just trying to encompass like what we want to know and then submitting them. Um, of course, stuff like this happens <laughs> within uh, the government like very, very fast and we don't really have a lot of time to prep, but I think prioritizing that, um, trying to get something in in the next couple hours just as, to submit, I think would be really helpful. Um, but yeah, everyone from the executive is welcome to um, join and then um, AVPs, but also I think extending the invitation to some of the other groups on um, campus, I think would be good. I guess like the seats for folks who have seats on council, I think that would be like more appropriate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Matt, for bringing this forward. Just a quick question. Um, and it may be a question that could be answered if I just pulled up the email, but is there a process for registering folks to attend this? Uh, and um, is there a deadline for that registration? I know the question deadline is today at 2 p.m., but is there a registration deadline in terms of who we are sending as representatives? Pretty much in the email, it just has like a little grid and it says how to join the meeting. It says to attend a live event on May 28th, please join us on Microsoft Teams at this link. Um, there's nothing like really specific. And I think it's like in this um, invite, but I think we just, because I don't think it's going to, that's why they want us to submit questions and be there present. So it'll probably be like kind of what SFU did when like no one could talk to anybody, <laughs> but just trying to address the questions. But I think it's just good if we can go. So I believe that's how it will be going. But I was trying to look because I didn't want to miss registration. But I don't see anything in this email. It just says um, MS Teams. But I clicked on the link and it looks like you have to... Oh, I guess you could just watch on the website. I'm just looking at it now. And then, do I have to make an account? This thing looks whack. I should just use Zoom, but whatever. <laughs> but yeah, from what I see, it just looks like there's a link that you just click on the day of, and then, yeah. That's what it looks like to, on my end. Sounds good, thanks, Matt. So I, I think we're good on that front. Um, Jess, you have, a, um, you have the floor for two minutes, go ahead. I put a link that Serena created this morning. It is a Google document link that is shared between the executives and all of us. Questions from Town Hall with Dr. Bon Henry. Um, if you would like Matt to look at these questions and then pick the ones that you think are most relevant, if you said top five, um, please take a look at that. Um, and if you are submitting a question, could you please put your name beside your submission so that if Matt needs to follow up with you, he can do that. Would that be okay? Thanks, Jess. Yeah, that's totally fine. So uh, Matt, you have a direct response. 
Yeah, like I say, minimum of five, if you're thinking anything, just add it because the more questions you add, then they might answer. So just throw them all in there. So can we just like bombard them with questions? So many questions. Is there anything you want to ask? Okay, cool. Because I do have a, yeah, a lot of questions. I have, um, <laughs> um, is anyone able to go on that link? So if, can someone click on the email and also click on the link? Because I don't know what's coming up for me. Um, it might just be like, I don't know. Is someone else is able to click on it and just let me know what happens on your screen? Let me give it a good test. Yeah, yeah. Oh, geez. Okay. Someone else try it. I forgot how much of a mess my inbox is. <laughs> I can't find the email. I wish I could link, but I'm on two separate computers, so I can't just... Oh, JK, I found it. So which one are you talking about? The Slido one? The Slido link? I don't know, no, just the Teams link, the very last bot. I just sent it. Um, oh. Like there's this, on the very bottom of that little grid, it says how to join the meeting. It says, please join us on this link. I just want to click. I see, if, yeah, that's what I got too. Okay, cool. Well, we'll play around with the link later. Maybe it's not the best thing to be doing in the meeting, but um, thank you, Matt. Uh, Marie, go ahead. Yeah. Um, I think it'd be good if we asked a question, something about like financial support when it comes to like low income students or like, yeah, financial support, financial funding. I know there's been like a kind of like a movement that recently came about from the Green Party saying something about like bring back the Canada emergency student uh, benefits. We can also ask about that. I think that's probably a really important question and probably something that people are looking at. It's really good. Thanks, Marie. I do, I guess, I have, I'm wondering, is this just Dr. Henry or is Health Minister Adrian Dix also going to be there too? Because they may just not answer that question. That may be more of a, uh, what's the word? An elected thing rather than a public health thing. But it's worth it's worth putting there because they may answer it. Anyway, that's something to look into. Um. Okay, so Corbett says yes. The government helped people with the transition to online classes, and they should help with the transition back to classes. So I would um, at this time. I do want to. Um, what was I going to say? Is there um, a point, a, a specific individual or points of contact here today who would like to um, be uh, take on the task of reaching out to FNSA and SOCA to invite, uh, and likely DNA too, I, I would think, um, and see if there are folks from those groups who would like to attend uh, this town hall as SFSS representatives? Matt says, Matt, you can? Cool, cool. Would you like my help? Cool. I can work with you on that. And if anyone else would like to work on that as well, you know who to contact. Cool. Did you want to use this time to brainstorm any more questions or, um, cause it looks like we have quite a few. Um, or to do this more offline. Matt, this is more directed to you. I'm just looking what we have right now quick. Um, I'm going to be pretty much working on this, like, through, like, up until at, right after this meeting, because I have an hour free. So I just kind of want to get it done after that. So if anyone wants to hop in, to kind of just go over and then can just submit. Well, these questions look, I'll read some of them now. Um, some of these questions include what preparations are you, are you making specifically for black indigenous and disabled students for a safe and accessible return to campus? Um, what preparations are you making for international students for a safe and accessible return to campus? Um, 
are you going to make data regarding outbreaks and cases that occur in post-secondary communities available to the public? Are clubs and organizations allowed to host events? Um, some introductory classes have over 300 students in a room. Um, how can these classes be safe when students don't necessar won't necessarily have a second vaccine dose by September? Um, these are all questions that are yet to be answered. And to be honest, from the primer that was released a couple of weeks ago from the provincial government, there are a lot of uh, really, really problematic and concerning assessments in there, namely, um, to name a few, around class size and, the, and you know, the require that, 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 you know, if there's a lecture hall with 300 seats, 300 people are going to be in that room, not necessarily social distance, not necessarily wearing masks. Um, and there's yet no, you know, we don't know if people are required to have a vaccine or not. Um, we don't know what plans they have for international students and, and vaccines. We don't know, um, you know, there's also a lot of problematic things around how post-secondary institutions should be working with Indigenous communities to make sure that um, a safe return to campus is even possible. Like, um, and, you know, the primer is, is just that. It's a primer, and I hope that whatever they release next in the coming weeks is a lot better than what they released before. Um, and hopefully through these questions that we're preparing, we can get some much, much, much needed clarity. Cool. And Serena has said, I can ask DNA because if you email DNA, it'll go to me. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, Jess, go ahead. If you're going to note something about the primer, can you specifically like cite it for anyone that's going to submit a question? I think that's doable. Is that good to everyone? Thumbs up. Nice. Okay. Any last questions or comments? Matt, how are you feeling? So good. I'm stoked. Cool. I'm stoked too. Uh, as a bit of an aside, um, there was a town hall a couple of weeks ago um, held with uh, for the post-secondary sector. It didn't include students, but it included university faculty, university faculty from across the province, staff and administration of universities. Um, there is a recording available for that as well. Um, I would recommend watching that too if you have time this week. Okay, we have two more discussion items and about half an hour left in the meeting, so I would like to get to those. Um, 7.4 is um, protests in Colombia. Um, and Serena, you submitted this, so you have the floor. Okay, cool, thank you. Um, as you all might know, I've been doing some research regarding the protests in Colombia. Um, I reached out to Sarah, who thank you so much for being here today, um, and got some firsthand insight as well um, into what's happening in Colombia. I'll read out this summary I have, um, just don't worry about writing it all down. I'll just copy paste it afterwards. Um, so since April 28th, a series of protests have occurred in Colombia. These protests are in response to a tax bill proposed by the government of Colombia. The tax reform would add a value added tax on food, utilities, wages, pensions, and other basic necessities, which would dispropor disproportionately impact the working class. Although the tax bill sparked the protests, outrage has been building for years. The killing of social and environmental leaders, corruption, a lack of support for the peace treaty that was signed a few years ago, um, economic policies that favored the rich and punished the poor, mass, displace mass displacement of people from their homes, a ban on forced coca uh, eradication, uh, privatization of healthcare, earlier tax increases, and the lack of support from the government during the pandemic, um, all built up to this moment. Um, unions, university students, teachers, Afro-Colombian and indigenous groups, and members of the working class have been at the forefront of these protests, where their demands have been uh, the withdrawal of the tax bill, free post-secondary education, an increase in their universal basic income, the government to pay long-standing debts debts to the most vulnerable um, in society, such as Indigenous and Afro-Latino people, Afro-Latino people, additional support for small businesses, a ban on using a glyphosate-based herbicides, basically um, 
that weed killer that causes cancer and a bunch of other stuff, um, that the police be held accountable for excessive violence um, used during the ongoing demonstrations, the withdrawal of a proposal to further privatize the country's healthcare system, the demilitarization de 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 of the protests, and for negotiations with the protest leaders to begin. Um, the demand to withdraw the tax bill has been successful, and university students who are in um, the lowest classes have been provided a semester of free tuition. Um, there's also been cases where um, students of higher classes may um, be delayed in accessing university to provide more spaces for um, folks of lower class. Um, the wins have come at the cost of approximately 50 deaths at the hands of police, the injuries of hundreds and the disappearances of hundreds as well. Um, I looked it up today and there's been some pre-agreements. I haven't looked into it. Um, I didn't get the chance to read a lot of articles about it today, but um, they're basically in negotiations with the government right now, the protest leaders, um, to get some agreements that could uh, potentially be uh, like come to fruition in the future. But I think it would be good um, to write a letter in support of um, the folks in Colombia and their uh, demands um, throughout these protests. Um, I have also reached out to the SFU Association of Latin American Students, and they have agreed um, to have their Colombian members edit a future statement and endorse it if they agree with the statement. Um, Ruben from the GSS is also Colombian, and uh, we could send it to him for another look over as well. Um, Sarah is also Colombian as well, as I mentioned. So um, she has also said that she's willing to look over it as well. Um, but yeah, I guess that's just the background. Um, and yeah, the first hand accounts are really heartbreaking. So I think it would be really important to put out a statement regarding this. And I think we, we wouldn't have to add that much based on like the document I have. Um, I think it's basically just formatting it into a letter, I think. Thank you so much, Serena, for bringing this forward um, and giving us a summary of what's been happening and, and for doing for doing research and for being proactive on this. And thank you, Sarah, too, for coming today. And I just want to offer the floor to you at all if you wanted to speak um, to, to this, too. Um, if you would like, um, no pressure. Um, you can put yourself on the speaker's list and I can, I can give you the floor. I absolutely agree with you. Serena, that we should be putting out a letter in support um, and that any any statement or letter that we do put out, uh, uh, as always, is just amplifying Colombian voices um, and ensuring that, you know, we are not um, centering ourselves, but rather amplifying voices that need that amplification at this time. Um, and um, I, I, I'm super thrilled to hear that you, you reached out to some students um, to work uh, on this. Um, Jess is asking in the chat, should we bring this to council? Um, I think that that should happen, yeah. Um, whatever letter um, we do end up completing would need council approval. So I, I, I see that as kind of a progression of steps um, we can work on. Uh, with um, Colombian students on drafting that letter and inevitably bringing it to council. Did anyone want to speak to this discussion item? Just go ahead. I'm just really proud of like the work that we've been doing and our, however, like our SFU and SFSS membership has been doing the past month already that we're taking into account and really putting forward um, these world issues because they are impacting our students directly. And we haven't really considered that before. And like, there's been so much going on. And um, I think we're really like, we're really doing the work of the progressive movement and we're including the students and our student groups who have, um, who are like really impacted by this 
and we are including student groups like the Latin, um, is it the Latin Student Association? We're we're talking about Colombia, we're talking about Palestine, we're talking about the uh, the Wergus. Like this is really good work, um, and thank you, Sarah, for your labor on this as well, and Serena for putting this forward. Marie. Yeah, I also wanted to extend my gratitude specifically to Serena and Sarah. I know both of you have been working really proactively on this, and I know that this stuff can definitely be really heavy to take on, So, which is historically why people have not taken it on. Um, yeah, thank you for centering students, especially marginalized students who are going through a lot. This stuff needs to be spoken about, and it needs to you know, a stance needs to be taken. And it's really essential that we do that in order to be amplifying marginalized students. So um, I did want to like send out my gratitude towards that. And I do think it really should go out to council for, you know, a general board stance and statement. So I really support that. But yeah, thank you again. And just please let me know if you need any of my help or support. Serena? Um, I just wanted to say, um, I will bring this to council for the next council meeting. Um, I wanted it to be a discussion item, but obviously we didn't get to um, some of the items at the last council meeting. I also wanted to say if anyone knows um, of any other um, Latin or Colombian student groups on campus, please do let me know and I can reach out to them as well. Thank you, Serena. Uh, Sarah. Um, yeah, I just um, wanted to thank you um, for doing this. Um, I already thank Serena um, because it's uh, really important for me to feel like we're not just like this forgotten country, you know, that nobody cares about. Um, so I just wanted to say thank you. Yeah, much love. This is me showing love. Um, that's great. Um, so Serena, I have a, a Serena and Sarah. Uh, is the intention um, to have a statement prepared for next week's council meeting, um, or is that too soon? Just so, just out of curiosity. I think. We can definitely have it ready for next week's council meeting. Um, it's just about getting feedback from um, the Latin Student Association, uh, Ruben and Sarah, and having that done before council uh, next week. But I think we can still present this item in some way um, to council. I just wanna make sure that when we pass it, so it might be a discussion item or a motion, but when we pass it, that it already does include the voices of like, Colombian students in it. Sounds good. I was going to um, suggest um, that if, if that was the intention to try and get a statement passed at council next Wednesday, that I recognize it is a discussion item. I think it got postponed um, to the next meeting, but um, if you would, if, if the intention is to have a statement ready for next week, um, that we submit a, a motion to council to um, basically, you know, with your whereas clauses and then a, be it resolved to approve the statement. Um, and uh, the agenda item deadline is tomorrow at noon. So um, if you want to submit that motion, even if the statement is not ready, you can always send the statement out at a later date, like a day or two before the meeting. But if you'd like to submit that motion, that's a possibility. And uh, even if you don't get the statement done in time, you, we can always postpone the motion to a future meeting to vote on it later if, if more time is needed. Does that sound good? Okay, so I'm seeing in the chat um, around, uh, just asked, should there be a working group with Latin and Colombian students and strike uh, Serena and Sarah as, uh, co-leads on that working group would you ra would you rather that um be the process here we can bring uh, a, a motion to strike a working group to council on wednesday 
rather than passing the full motion uh, on Wednesday. Thoughts on that? I guess specifically from Sarah and Serena. Uh, yeah, I think that's a good idea. Then I can reach out to the Latin Student Association uh, this week and see if they want to get involved as like at-large members of the um, of the working group is what I meant to say. That's great. And I think that gives us more time to just make sure that we're including the voices that need to be included in this process. So just, I guess, to recap um, our action items on this, um, Serena and Sarah will work together to submit a motion to strike a working group at Wednesday's council meeting. Um, I can help you with the wording of that motion, Serena and Sarah, if, if needed. Um, as well, um, the two of you will be reaching out to um, Latin American and Colombian student groups. Um, and have I missed anything on this on this front? List. Oh, go ahead. And if we know any other Latin or Colombian student groups to let Serena, to let VP Bates know. Uh, Sarah? Yeah, no, I just want to um, support the idea of a working group. Um, just because it's, what's happening, it's, um, there's a lot of opinions going around. Um, and so I, I really want to make sure that we represent and inform people accordingly to what's happening. Um, and so having different Colombian opinions on it would be a great idea. Thank you so much, Sarah. Okay. Um, at this time, uh, we have those action items. Are there any other questions or comments at this time on this item? Okay, perfect. Again, I just want to thank um, Sarah for your labor, on, Sarah and Serena for your labor on this. And I really hope that um, by the end of this process, we can um, really amplify the voices that that needed at this time. Um, oh, one last thing, I guess. Is there, I much like was done with the Palestine and Uyghur motions at the last council meeting, is there a possibility that we can put together a package of resources for folks to um, educate themselves on this topic as well? Definitely, I can, uh, Sarah provided me some uh, Colombian news sources that I can include and I can include some of the research that I've done as well and maybe look into some um, like Latin specific um, like support resources as well, if people read it and it's triggering for them and that kind of thing. Thank you so much. That sounds, that's great. Okay. Okay, so if, if that is all the discussion on this item, protests in Colombia, again, thank you, Sarah and Serena, so, so much. Um, and I'm looking forward to this going to council um, 7.5 um, is a, a discussion item on the Access for All campaign, um, and this was also submitted by Serena, um, so I'll pass the floor to you again. For sure, thank you. Um, just a quick update, I guess. Um, I, this was also something that was meant to be discussed at Council, but unfortunately we didn't get to it. Um, I hope that everyone got a chance to read the briefing note, but if you didn't, um, that's okay too. Um, it's basically where we're at currently is that um, I brought this item forward to the table of student societies. So GSS, um, TSSU, um, SFERG and SFSS are gonna have a meeting in early June regarding this campaign, um, how we can support each other and what next steps we should take. Um, I've been reaching out to student groups um, on campus 
Um, FNSA will discuss this at their members meeting on the 31st, which is great because um, I know a bunch of us are planning on going. Um, I was supposed to meet with the international student group yesterday, but unfortunately I read their email late. So we're gonna be rescheduling. Um, Engineering Science Student Society is putting out a survey to their students um, regarding how COVID has impacted them and what they would like to see in a return to campus. So I'm supposed to be getting that data um, next week. Um, there's a bunch of other student groups who are already in support, like cognitive science, psychology, um, another science one that I'm forgetting. Um, but I think those are the main updates. I think what I wanted to ask to the group is I know that in JOG, um, it was mentioned that um, like the, the full plan for um, a return to campus in the fall is going to be updated in June and it will be in effect by the end of August. So we are kind of like in a time crunch. Um, I was wondering if maybe we could write a letter to have that ready for council and then in the individual student groups to sign on to by the next council meeting. That's another emotion I have to put forward. I have to remember to do that. Um, but if people would be down to uh, help write the letter, I think based off the briefing note, it's also just like restructuring things. And I don't think it'll take too long. Um, just so we can get this moving a bit quicker, I think, um, so that we can pressure um, SFU and other institutions to update their plan before the full plan comes out, because um, that may give us like more constraints and um, may cause us uh, to have less leverage than we do right now, I guess. Thank you, Serena. Um, I'm fully on, oh, I'm dropping it. One second. I'm fully on board with that. Um, I think that there are kind of two we can write the same letter, but I think there's almost two recipients that we can be sending this to. A, SFU, and B, um, the provincial government, um, specifically to public health and the Ministry of Health. Um, because in my view, we know what SFU stance on a return is, and they, their um, mantra is we take guidance from provincial health. Um, and they don't, like to veer too far off that path. Um, and so I think that um, kind of whatever statement or letter we put out, it would be great to kind of send it to both SFU, um, but also the, uh, the provincial government as well. And Matt is also indicating the, minis the Ministry of Advanced Education fully. See lots of plus pluses. So, um, Serena, I'm available this week to, to help uh, put together that statement. Um, Matt also appears to be down to help. Um, is anyone else would like to hop, hop onto this and, and help out as well? Can someone clarify the statement, please, and thank you. Like what the statement will be? So the statement will be... Um, uh, and Serena, please clarify. Uh, uh, I can't speak anymore. Follow up if, if I missed anything, but um, it will be A, outlining our concerns with the return to campus plan. B, um, indicating what we would like to see in terms of supports academically, financially, economically, socially um, for the return. Um, yeah, I think those are the two biggest things. What we want to see and what our concerns are right now. And Marie is saying, it was first of all, suggested, does that make sense? Marie has indicated that they can support, that she can support too if needed. Serena, you're on the speakers list. Um, I can send out a calendar invite based on everyone's calendars. I think I have both of Matt's calendars. That's the only thing I'm ever worried about. <laughs> so I think we'll be good there. I can send one out for, is this week really busy for folks or should we push it to early next week? For me, Thursday and Friday are pretty good. 
I don't know about everyone else. Sounds good. I can send one out for um, Gabe, Matt, Marie, and I then. Sounds good. Cool. Thank you so much, Serena, for coordinating this. Um, and I think we can get something really good done in, in like an hour, which is great. Are there any other questions or comments on the Access for All campaign and our statement at this time? Sarah asked, can I support as well? Absolutely. I think that, that would be awesome if you want to help out with this. Um, how about this? As we schedule a, a meeting to put together the statement, um, uh, we can reach out to you two as, as well to make sure that whatever um, uh, 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 statement creating session that we plan is also uh, aligning with your availability as well. Matt, go ahead. Yeah, I think it makes sense um, for, I think there should be like, what am I trying to say? Okay, so like the executive committee, like to address it like as soon as possible to get that out and then work with council as well. And like, um, Sarah, you can still help with this, like no issue. But I'm just like for like pre-planning to kind of get, imagine if we had like all of council and all the DSU sign off on like a bigger letter once we get our executive statement out, just because it needs to be like, now and then work with them to kind of push that and um, elevate what is happening um, for the access for all campaign and I know that that probably should have been something that was discussed but it got pushed on discussion items so that might be something to bring up as well yeah that's thank you Matt very much I definitely we definitely should bring it to council um, and it will be coming up <laughs> at council um, next Wednesday which is great something you know of course we need to put out a statement soon because it is kind of time sensitive but whatever further communication comes from us as the SFSS uh, on the return to campus, um, again, we really should be um, consulting with FNSA and SOCA on their specific concerns regarding the fall return to campus and making sure that that is fully en encompassed in any advocacy or um, statements that we put out regarding the fall return. So that is fully something we need to be prioritizing as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Marie makes a very good point. That will be taking place in terms of the uh, student union building opening planning process as well. Um, what we know is that SFU has not been making consultation a priority for their fall return to campus. And so we absolutely do not want to be like SFU and making that a, a, an afterthought in our opening plans as well and our, our fall return to campus advocacy. So prioritizing that, making it first rather than an afterthought. We've seen what consultation does. When, when, when consultation is treated as an afterthought, it's dangerous. Okay. Any last comments or questions? Well, in light of that, um, I was fully not expecting us to get through the bulk of our agenda before 12 p.m. So um, congratulations, everyone. We'll move on to um, the next section of our agenda, which is announcements. And 8.1, this is just a reminder that our next executive committee meeting will be in two weeks time from today, Tuesday, June 8th, 2021 at 11 a.m. I mean, 11, 10 a.m., 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Um, and with that, um, we'll move into adjournment. Um, I'm looking at motion 10.1 and uh, the motion reads, be it resolved to adjourn the meeting at 11.56 a.m. Um, is there a mover for the motion? Matt. Matt moves, is there a seconder? Jess. Jess seconds. You know, I've chaired a lot of meetings with Matt in the meetings, and I've noticed that he's always the first one to move, to adjourn. I feel like he's always in a bit of a rush to, to leave. But anyway, all those in favor of adjourning the meeting, seek me unanimous consent. <laughs> okay, um, seeing no objections, that motion is carried unanimously.
thanks everyone for a really good meeting this morning. Um, hope you have a good rest of your day.